welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, I'm not entirely sure this foundation matches me. Oh, that's not the however. The however is that if you have checked the thumbnail, of the title, and indeed uh, the description box, uh, you know that uh, this look today has been brought to you by an avocado juggling with other fruit, hang on, low hanging fruit, hmm? a peach and a pineapple. So, if you want to know exactly how these beautiful fruity items behaved, performed, and whether I like them or not, then my friend, you, are in precisely the right place. Grab your avocado toast, grab your pineapple and cheese on sticks if you are one of my OG babies who are similar age to me. Grab a drink, put your feet up, sit back and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I have a new head thingy and it has a unicorn horn and flowers and a fluffy little veil thing which feels ridiculously OTT and just too fabulous not to wear darling. Right, I will have shown you this and possibly these in the intro. Uh, whether I've put them in their boxes to show you, genuinely can't, I don't know because I haven't got to that point yet. <laughs> right, this is the some of the new food or fruit um, line from I Heart Revolution. This is tasty avocado. And unlike their chocolate bar um, ones, which are very, very shiny plastic, these are very tactile, very soft, very strokeable. Um, I don't know if you can see the kind of, I'm trying to get the light on it in such a way you can see it's, it's not reflective at all. The back is, the back is the usual plastic, but the front has got this, almost, it almost feels like, like felt or, or suede, but it, it it's, I like it. I, I feel like I want to stroke it. Anyway, this is a tasty avocado palette. Uh, comes with the usual mirror. Thankfully, the names are printed on the thingy, so I haven't got to try and save that plastic sheet. And I'll turn this upside down so I don't dazzle you. These are the colours. Look at this. I Heart Revolution have produced a green palette that has more than two green shades in it. It's not filled with brown. Let me chuck the um, <clears throat> swatches up on screen for you. Right, top row, left to right, wrist to elbow. Smash, toast, avo, California, smoothie, half, has, guacamole, and a brunch. And then on the second row, we've got green gold, which I think is a duochrome. Mousse, stone, creamy, which you can probably barely see against my skin tone. Bite, pear, foodie, seed, and lime. And I am back again. Hello. Right. Um, I'm super excited to get into this. I really am. Um, this is the blush, which is, again, I Heart Revolution. This is soft. Shimmer Blusher in Peach. Cheap and nasty packaging. Really cheap and nasty packaging. 
but super pretty yes I have swatched this that's why it looks a little bit smudgy at the top there and I also picked up I get the feeling this may actually be too dark for me but you know me and pineapples pineapple coconut I want it uh, this is the shimmering highlighting powder in uh, pineapple I have a pair I have pineapple Burn. Anybody else got hooked on watching that? I could watch it for hours, that's ridiculous. Right, again, cheap and nasty packaging, but super pretty. I would imagine this is going to be a dupe for the Fenty Trophy Wife. So I'm, I'm going to have to be very, very light handed with this one today. Me, light handed with a highlight. then right um, regular viewers will know this is a teaching channel so partly due to my chronic pain making me uh, be unable to blend too quickly because of getting shooting pains because of my fibro and partly because I want absolute beginners who've never ever picked up a brush before to be able to follow me um, I go through step by step all the way through um, I basically hold your hand all the way through this so if I do go too slowly for you, uh, please just use the speed button and speed me up because I won't be offended because let's be honest, I won't know unless you tell me. Right, faces washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. I'm trying two primers today. I'm trying that No Problem from Touching Soul. Um, and as usual, I've got my antiperspirant primer on, and I use this one. If you want to know more details about this, I've got a film linked in my description box. It is an essential for me all year round, but especially this time of year, because without that, I wouldn't keep makeup on my face for more than 10 minutes. There are still times when pain and heat combine, and even that won't keep foundation on my face. But, you know, most of the time it's it's not too bad. It will actually hold stuff the majority of the days. So, all I've got on my eyes at the moment is the Crow and Pebble White Eye Base in a blank page cotton. Uh, I do have a discount code for them. It's listed in the description box. All my codes are very clearly marked as to whether I earn from them or not. Right. Hubby was filming yesterday with this, so I have to make sure the camera's at my height, not his. Right, okay. Um, I always go through this at the beginning of my films, so that um, if this is the first one you've watched, you'll be able to follow me. Now, when I look straight ahead, you can see, with my brows relaxed, all of my mobile eyelid. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I don't have hooded eyes. It's only if your static lid completely covers your mobile lid right down to the lash line that you have either a half or a full hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. However, what I do have is deep set eyes. Um, I started to hear them being referred to as double lidded eyes recently. Um, and I, I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transfer of shimmer onto the upper eyelid. If I'm cutting my crease, I can't just um, follow my socket. I have to cut up onto the upper lid. Um, and even when I use glitter glue, I will get a bare patch right through the crease there. Let me show you why. If I cover my visible mobile lid, and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again that tucks back away. And if I do the same thing with the top lid, you can see I've got lid there that tucks back in as well. So that's why I get the same issues as people with hooded lids, and that's why a lot of people with deep set eyes like myself 
mistakenly get told they have hooded lids because nobody actually explains the difference anymore. Now, if you have hooded lids, you can still follow my tutorial, you can follow anybody's tutorial. All you need to do, get a brush, something like this, or a fine pencil brush, and on your static lid, just mark where you want to create a false mobile lid. Now, if you've only got a half hooded eye, you can still create the um, mobile lid on your static lid, but then just bring it slightly thinner this side till it comes down so that it's not as thick here. So it gives the illusion that you have the same amount of space all the way across the eye. Now, I always put a deeper colour through my crease. And when I'm saying through my crease, if you've had to move yours up, you follow your line. Don't follow what I'm doing on screen. The reason I always put a deeper colour there is because dark colours recede, light colours come forward. So if you've had to create a false mobile lid, having a deeper colour through your new crease will give the impression when you're talking to people and they're standing at a standard distance apart, not right up close at tutorial level, um, it won't be so obvious what you've done. It will look as if that part of the eye is falling back as it would do normally. Okay. Now obviously this will reduce the space between your crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller brushes than I do and you'll be absolutely fine. Right. That's enough blethering. Should we get around to putting some colour on my face now? Hmm? Right, I'm going to go in with this Boozy Shop Tapered Blending Brush. It is clean, it's just stained. I need to put it through its deep clean again, I think. Now, I've not set this, and it's not a sticky tacky lid. It, it, it's a self-setter. The reason I don't go over it with a translucent powder, or a powder the same colour as my skin tone, is because if you put um, a colour onto a non-set primer or you set the primer with the colour it gives you a more impactful um, wash of colour it makes the colour look brighter okay let's get started uh, I think I am going to start, let me just get my swatches up on the screen for a minute because that might actually be quite helpful. Okay, I think I am going to start off with guacamole. Um, reasonable amount of kick up in pan doesn't worry me it means at least you can get the pigment onto the brush don't worry about uh, blowing the pigment away because you can just dip back into it again when we go back in for more pigment in a minute now I'm going to tap this into place initially to build the pigment up I like to leave three or four mil gap between the top of the colour and the brow whenever I can because it just makes the brow highlight punch a little bit more that we're going to do later on. So I'm just tapping this colour into place just to, to build it up to the, the sort of depth of shade that I want. Once I've tapped it all on like that, I can actually start blending. So I can pick up some pigment on the brush and actually start blending with it. So if you're going towards the nose, you blend towards the nose. And if you're coming back, you blend away from the nose. The reason I do this is because, as you can see they're rather helpful, it's just folded over for me. Um, I'm 45 years old, I've lost over 10 stone so my eyelids are not as taut and firm as some people's. So by doing little circular movements, you're very, very gently moving the skin on your eye around without pulling it too hard. 
so you're making sure you're not going to get any white patches to give it away. Now, um, there's three elements I have to deal with. This part here and this part here on both eyes are super resistant to taking colour because of creasing there. So very often after I've blended to make sure I've got a soft edge, I have to pick up a wee bit more pigment and just rebuild the colour back up, as you can see. And that's not the fault of the shadow, that's just how my that's just how my skin behaves basically. Uh, the other issue I have is with my other eye, I'm blind in that eye. And it was pulled around an awful lot when I was sort of a kid, and by a kid I mean 40 years ago, you know, five years old. And because of that I've got super, super deep creasing, just here, as you can see. Now sometimes the circular movement will work, and I won't get any tiger striping or barcoding. Other times, not so much, and in those cases I have to stretch the lid out. Um, if you see me do that, don't do that with yours unless the circular movement doesn't work for you. So you can see again on this eye I'm just tapping the pigment into place initially because obviously we've not set this lid yet. And you can see this is, a, this is building up really nicely because greens are actually one of the most difficult colours to create. Green, blue, purple the most difficult ones. So that's why a lot of green palettes you'll see an awful lot of browns and browny greens but you don't get very many true greens in them. So that's why I'm really pleased to see that with this one I Heart Rev have actually put green in there rather than wimping out which is great to see because it gives you more of an option if you can't afford some of the higher end palettes that are out with lots and lots of greens in them. Um, you know, this gives you an option and I'm really hoping that they're going to do more palettes like this where there are fewer browns in it and more actual colours. I was so disappointed with their violet palette that they did because there were literally only about three or four purples in it and it really annoyed me. Right, let's have a look and see if that... Yeah, you can see, just before it just wiped on the back of my hand, um, you can see I've still got some faint barcoding there. So I'm just going to very, very quickly, very, very lightly fill those in. As I said, do not pull your eye around like this if the circular movement will work for you or you will end up with horrible deep creases and you'll have to do that and I promise you they only end up getting worse and bearing in mind my eye was pulled around at a time when it was at its firmest yeah, five years old right that's the first colouring I actually really like that it's not quite as bright as it appears in pan but it's not far off so that's actually a really good start. Right, I've got a clean washcloth here that I'm cleaning the brush off on. And I'm going to dip it into, I think, half next, which is an olive green. Now, because um, applying this first green has actually set that lid, when I go in with half, I can actually go straight in with a windscreen wiper movement. Backwards and forwards, through my crease, follow your crease if you've had to move it. Just backwards and forwards to set the line. Okay, and I'm going to pick up some more pigment. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do circular movements, but rather than go all over the eye, I'm going to make sure don't worry about fallout, I haven't done my base yet. I'm going to make sure that I keep the, the bristles of the brush in contact with that line. So the lowest part of the bristles here will be in contact with this colour I've already put down. And we're going to do circular movements, tiny, tiny circles, 
lightly as we can and holding the brush right at the very end. Circular movements across to the middle, bounce up and down a couple of times, reverse the direction of the brush and come back again but we're still staying in touch with the lowest part of that. Okay, I'm going to repeat that a couple of times just to make sure we've got a really really good blend and also to make sure that we haven't got any white bits or like green bits as they would be now. Now you can see that's actually blended really nicely into the colour above. If you... sorry that will bug me in editing if I don't deal with it now. If you've still got quite a harsh line here, if you go back into guacamole and just pick up a little bit of the light colour and then very lightly, very, very tiny windscreen wiper movements all the way along where the two colours meet. By putting a bit of guacamole, the lighter colour, on your brush, you're not going to blend away the colour you've put down, but it'll just help you get a slightly smoother edge. If you're finding you're not getting a very smooth edge, you need to look at getting a brush that's slightly looser packed because it's not giving you the blend that you want. Okay. Same thing this side, windscreen wiper through the crease, follow your crease if you've moved it. And I'm going to go and pick some pigment up and it's time for circles. Like a circle in a spiral, like an ever blending wheel, or whatever the words are. Never ending, never ending. Ah. I probably should probably stop or I'll get a copyright claim when I. Yeah, so my husband last night, he wants to start his own channel with his own form of entertainment. It's not makeup. So guess he's going to have to do the editing for him. But once the channel's up, I might link it in my um, description box if any of you are interested in seeing what El Hubbo has been up to. Now you can see I got a bit of a bare patch there, which didn't want to take colour. I do get that sometimes on my eyelids. And you could see from this side, it's not the colour doing that, it's actually my, the way my eyelid's behaving. Right, let's have a look and see if that's... Uh, it's got a little bit of barcoding. So we'll just have a little bit of a quick blend. There we go. And pick up a little bit of the guacamole. And just lightly blend where the two colours meet. Yes, I've got hella fallout here. That will always happen on this eye because um, where it was pulled around so much, it is looser than the skin on this eye. So I always get more fallout. This is why, I mean, you can minimise fallout by tapping off your brush, but that can sometimes mean that you have to go in more often to build the colour up, which is not a problem. You can do it that way if you're someone that likes to do your base first or, you know, put a load of powder down to catch it but if you're over 30 don't do that because baking is not our friend um, but um, when I've got fibro the skin on my eyes is very sensitive so I don't like to blend on it too often okay I'm gonna grab this Morphe M562 and I'm going to go in to, it's actually a satin. Now you can, you can use a satin and blend it like a matte. Um, it will go patchier, you will have to work harder. It's better. Um, 
but as you blend the shimmer pigments will eventually sort of dissipate and just leave you with the colour underneath. So I'm going into stone and I'm going to run this through my crease starting off in tiny windshield movements because it is a darker colour I don't want to splay it all over the nose and then in the full wiper movement now you can see this eye instantly looks deeper than this eye even though you can't really see that shadow too much and that's the effect that you will get if you've done a false mobile lid okay so I'm picking up more pigment and what I'm going to do I'm, for this eye I'm going to tilt my head backwards and look at you because obviously I can't close the eye because being blind in this one and there wouldn't be a lot of makeup happening. With this eye, I can close the eye and show you a little bit clearer the technique. But again, I've loaded the brush up, and this time I'm only going to blend it rather than just keeping the bottom br bristles in contact. I'm going to try and center it so that all I'm doing with these tiny circles is just fluffing the edges out ever so slightly. Okay, so it's exactly the same procedure circle towards the nose as we come in a bit of a bounce reverse the direction and come back again and again we'll do this a couple of times just to make sure we've got a really really good blend literally all we're trying to do is soften the edges of this colour we're not trying to take it up the eye at all it's literally just serving as a deepener to give us definition back to that crease. And I'm going to pick up some more stone on the brush and add it in the outer corner here. If it doesn't want to go on, get a slightly thicker brush because sometimes shimmers can do that on a fine brush and just pack it into the corner there and just give it a little bit of a blend okay and now we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other eye so again start off waggling through the crease and then doing the full windscreen wiper. Again, if you've moved your crease, follow your line. You can see there, look, how much this lid moves. Can you see how many... Like a, like a marionette fan. And again, I'm going to pick some colour up on the brush. Tiny little circular movement just to blend the colour out bit of a bounce at this end, reverse the direction and come back again, reverse the direction to its original one, back to the nose, bit of a bounce, reverse direction, come back again, check my barcoding, I'm just going to clean the little brush off. Uh, the other brush that I picked up, by the way, was a Roaring Langnickel Chic Pro Eyeshadow Brush, if you were wondering. And just whack that pigment on in the corner. see a blooming thing now. Fingers crossed. Hey! Right, okay, I like that. Now, I'm going to go into one of the shimmers. 
never go into a pressed powder with a wet brush. If you're going to wet your brush, which I am, you should always wet it after you've loaded the pigment on. The only time you can go into something with a wet brush is if you're going into a loose pigment. When you go to pick something up and drop it three times, marvellous. Right, what I'm actually using, um, this is a iHeart Revolution fixing spray in vanilla and coconut. Um, you can use anything, you can use a moisturising spray like Mario Badesco or Fix Plus, you can use a priming spray, you can use a setting spray, you can even just use clean water. Okay, All we're doing is moistening or dampening the pigment to give it a more bright, shiny, metallic or metallicised or metallised finish. Um, I think I am going to start off by going into, let's go into the green gold, and I'm going to pack some pigment, this is one of the um, brushes that I mention in, uh, which brushes do I recommend film which is listed below. This is one of the AliExpress ones, and this is brush number two. Okay, and then you wet the shadow. I always dry this ferrule off on my hand like this, by twisting it against my fingers, just so that no moisture runs down and loosens these bristles here. Right, so that you can see what I'm doing with this eye, I'm actually going to look down into this little mirror, and then you can still see what's happening. So I'm just going to apply this shimmer to the middle of my lid here and then bring it out just so that it meets the darker shade that I put in the corner and you can see it is actually opaque enough that it is covering the darker shades that have come onto the mobile lid this is why the first time I'm using a palette I won't do a cut crease because I want to see exactly how good the pigments are. Right, so I'm going to clean this brush off and dry it off on this washcloth. Make sure it's bone dry. And back into the green gold pigment. Load up both sides of my brush. pigment and do the middle of this side you can see this lid definitely moves an awful lot more than the other one does but sadly I didn't know at five years old the things I know now. And to be honest, if I'd said something to the uh, ophthalmologist there at the hospital, I probably would have been told, don't be silly when you're 45, you've been married with children and possibly even your first grandchild. Yeah, right, times change, mate. Right, so clean the brush off. I actually really like that colour. And I'm going to go into Smash, which is the first colour in the palette. Again, I'm going to load up both sides of my brush. Okay. Dry the ferrule off. Grab your mini mirror to do this eye. And I'm going to put this in the inner corner 
and bring it out to meet that green gold pigment. Let's dry that off a minute, pick up a little bit more of this pigment. Because the pigment I'd already laid down is wet, I didn't need to re-wet when I picked up this. And then just blend across the top. So the two colours blend together. I really like that. Right. Clean and dry the brush again. This one is a lot softer in pan. Um, if you press too hard on it, it kind of flakes up in the pan like that. So, bear that in mind when you're using it. I don't know with this one, because of the deep creasing, I do have to pull my lid out, otherwise the shimmer just settles in the creases. And as I move my eye throughout the day, it showers down my cheek, which is not really the look I'm going for. If I wanted multi-coloured freckles, that'd be a great shortcut. But that's not what I'm looking for. Again, just going to blend that across the green gold pigment to blend the two together. I am loving this already. Okay, I am going to, while I'm cleaning this brush, I'll talk to you. Uh, I'm going to pause you while I go off screen and do my foundation, etc. And I will be back. So, uh, you will see me instantly. I will see you the next time I press the button. See you in a moment. <laughs> I need green brows today because it felt appropriate. Um, I don't have a green pomade. What I have done is I have mixed a bit of the Revolution uh, Ocean Blue pomade with a bit of Colourpop uh, Punch Yellow Gel Liner. Not a pomade, gel liner. But I've mixed the two together, put them in a little pot now I have my own little bit of green pomade to be going on with. Um, I thought as I got, as I showed you the blush and the highlight, I thought I'd better put the blush on so you can see it. So, big old floofy brush. This is, I think, no it's not the Smoke and Mirrors one. I think this is a BH, oh, what does it say there? Yeah, BH Cosmetics V2. And I'm just going to swirl this. Whoa, do you see the... Yeah. Do you see the powder coming off of it? And then I'm just going to... Apply it. Oh, this is a really nice colour. Hmm. It's got a little bit of shine to it. I always pop a little bit up over my brows. Don't ask me why. It's a, it's a thing. If you're wondering why I start at the back and come forward, it's because if you do have too much powder on your on your brush, it's much easier to blend out back here and cover it up than it is if you go a bit OTT here. Like a little bit on my nose, a little bit under my chin. Okay. Uh, that's enough of that for the minute. Um, actually, I might. I might go over it. I've got this hourglass dim light, like so. Again, this is this I know is just a random brush that I got off of eBay. And I'm just gonna I use the um, butter bronzer in bronzer today from Physicians Formula. I've actually hit pan. I've actually got a tiny bit of pan this morning, which excites me greatly. I like just running this over because it, it sort of, 
I don't know if you can see it, it just it just sort of pulls it all together and just gives you a slight it, it doesn't make you shiny but it makes you look not so matte if that makes any sense at all just wanted to show you that I hit pan. that excites me greatly greatly shows you how often I use that that I've hit pan right let's get your zoom back in again Oh, as this film is going to be way too long. It's probably long enough for more the waffling as I do. <laughs> okay. Going in with my flat top brush. And because one of my fibro symptoms is that I get very runny eyes, add to that the ridiculous hay fever that I'm suffering with this year. And I am really struggling with wearing eyeliner so there is a little trick that I've got I will pass it on to you I'm going to pick up some of the stone colour which is the colour we used through here and just join it up there and run that along under about two thirds of my lash line roughly and then I'm going to really load that brush up with that colour and just stamp right at the edge there like that. It's almost imperceptible unless you're up super super close. But if I sit back, can you see that it's made that eye look more cat-like and it pulls it out and up at the corner so it gives you the same effect as having a wing without actually having to have a wing. So if you two are struggling at the moment with hay fever and eyeliner, I mean if you're just struggling with how do I apply eyeliner, I have got a little mini tutorial on that. Um, if you go to the mini tutorials playlist, you will find it in there along with eyebrow shaping and I think I did, did I do putting on false lashes? I think I did do putting on false lashes as well. If there's any other little mini tutorials that you want, let me know in the comments box. And again, load it up, just stamp on the edge there. And then when we, um, when we blow out the lower lash line with another colour, I'm going to stop it here, because if you blow out along this line here, you lose the wing effect. So if you are going to do like I do and use a second colour just to soften this, you have to stop right at the corner of your eye and not go along the sort of fake wing that you've made. Right, I love this brush. It's the one out of the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. But it's flat topped and chunky so it's great for getting up under your lashes. And I am going to go into, I think, Lime because I haven't used that one yet. And I'm super tempted by it. Look at that. I'm just going to run that along the lower lash line and buff that deeper colour out. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. I do like that colour. In fact, for work, you could probably get away with sweeping lime over your lid and then using either toast or seed, which are the two, one, uh, two of the browns in here, through your crease. And you could get away with that for work quite easily. Did my white balance just change? It did in my viewfinder. I guess I'll find out when I'm editing now. Yes, I'm flinching this side because the number of times I've poked myself in the eye because of having no peripheral vision that side and having to rely on muscle memory and a viewfinder. Put it this way. If I had a pound for every time I'd done that. Right, let's open up this pineapple shimmering highlighting powder. Right, this is a decade old lip brush that I bought from eBay years ago. I'm going to go into the lighter part to go up under the tail of my brow because I don't want that too yellow because I don't want to detract 
from the eye colour and I just pop this up under the, the tail end of the brow it just it gives the brows a bit of a lift which um, makes your eyes look more awake more alive and apparently more youthful oh my nose is itching right I'm now going to go into some of the deeper orange here orange yellow you can see there are actually three different shades actually having said that I'm going to the deepest one on the leaves because that would be way too deep for my skin for my cheeks etc but it could be a really nice oh it is a really nice inner corner highlight oh, okay I see you This would be beautiful on a deeper skin tone as well. One of my more melanin enriched ladies and gents. Now you can just do the inner corner like that, but what I like to do is to continue it along under the tear duct, just blend it in with that first bit of colour there. For my eye shape, I find that's the most flattering. If you don't want to do that, you can just leave it like this. You don't have to come along underneath like that. I just like it because I feel like it finishes the look off, you know. Hmm. Hmm, I say. Oh, I need to pluck that, that hair just there, don't I? Hmm. It's amazing you things you see in HD that you don't see in the mirror in the morning. Right, let's see me back out again in a minute. To there. And I'm going to attempt to just go into the medium shade on the side. This is my Zoeva. Actually, I could use my. Let me try my fan brush instead. This is a fan brush from Ranimore or Animore, which is again one of the AliExpress set that I mentioned. Let's try that on my nose. What do we think? I can get away with that. I think I can get away with that. Top lip. Chin. Although, well, having inherited my sticky out chin from my father, it doesn't really need any enhancement. But let's try this on the cheeks. See what we get. See how it looks. Mm, you can see a slight dark cast there with it. But okay, I'm going to put it on the other side as well and then I'll show you how you deal with that if you do this and try highlighter and go, oh no, it's too dark because when I look forward I can just see the shadow of it. So you finish applying like so. And then you grab something like this Ofra Nikki Tutorials Glazed Donut, which is pure white. And you just go over the top with the white. And you can now see that it takes away the darker shadowing. Of course this highlight is just amazing anyway, you don't have to use one quite this blinding, but this is me and I like a blinding highlight, so Right, clean that off on there. I'm going to pause you one more time while I bung some mascara on, bung some lippy on, do something with my hair, which thankfully you can't see under this at the moment. Uh, and I will be back with my 
Final first impressions. Hmm. I am back. Okay. The lippy is one of these new Revolution Pro New Neutrals Satin Matte Lippy in the shade Stripped. Now, the outside packaging has leopard print on, but so does the outside packaging of the bullet lipstick. I love that. There's no leopard print on the actual bullet itself, that's just a nice soft satin finish but I really do love the fact that they have got the Revolution Pro there it's very very subtle and nine times out of ten all people are going to see when you're doing your lippy is that leopard print and I love that that is so cute as I said this is in shade stripped which is a really nice light um, mauve or mauve tone but what we are talking about oh and setting spray was Gerard Slay all day in coconut because you know I want it to last all day I've got to go out later don't want more makeup melting off my face thank you very much um, mascara is my usual Catrice Glamour Doll waterproof volume mascara as I always say that is a bang on dupe for Benefit Bad Girl Bang, uh, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. Now, what I am talking about today is this tasty avocado. I think I might show you this not in its packaging in the intro because I, I quite like the. Yes, I think that would make quite a cute thumbnail ish. Me pulling a duck face at an avocado. A millennial of me. Anyway, what do I think of this palette? Now, obviously, so far I have only used three mattes, uh, one satin, and two shimmers. Now, as I said, this one here got super scrappy. And I'm I'm like Jessica in that I like my palettes to look like they've never actually been used. So all of mine are kept pristine. So that's annoying me that it looks that. Mm. Um, from the shades that I have used so far, I like it. Um, it didn't take a lot of effort to build up. It built up pretty much true to colour in pan. It wasn't a massive amount of fall up out to deal with and what did fall out swept away super easily. Um, I love, 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 love the fact that if you were to take this as an example, there are this many browns and this many greens, which normally in a revolution palette it would be this many greens and this many browns. So I'm super, super happy that they are now producing palettes with far fewer browns because if you've got any of the other iHeartRev palettes, you're going to have browns in them. There's only so many browns a girl needs in her life. I don't know whether they've been inspired by the popularity of the Colourpop monotone um, palettes. It could be that that is what has encouraged them to, for them, being super, super brave and not including browns in the palette, um, or as many browns as they usually do, but I don't know why they've suddenly changed tact, but I'm extremely glad that they have changed tact. I love the fact that this is a green packaging for a palette the majority of colours of which are green or shades thereof. Um, I think it's it is beginner friendly because the colours don't go on too deep straight away. 
but they also build up quickly enough that if you are more expert you're not going to get frustrated dipping back in and dipping back in and dipping back in to get the colour you need. Um, so I think they've, they've got the balance just about right with this one in that it won't go on too heavy initially to scare beginners but it will be efficient enough for experts not that I'm an expert um, you know it, it, it should cover all uh, skill levels so it was definitely a good buy if I was if I had tried this and it was a friend's one would I buy my own? Yes, I would. Obviously, I will continue to use this off screen. Um, and if my view changes, I will do another film where I mention that my view has changed. But for the time being, this gets a big old thumbs up from me. Peach blush. Pretty slight shimmer to it, or slight sheen rather than shimmer. Um, you do have the option, depending on the size of your brush, of just using the pinky bit in the middle or including the peachy bit. Um, but I think the majority of people are just going to swirl their brush. Gives you a very, very universal shade in terms of undertone, not melanin level. But if you are warm tone, cool tone or neutral, the shade that this produces would suit all of you because it's not too hot, it's not too cool, it's not too neutral, it's, it strikes a fine balance between all three. So do I recommend this? If you're anything up to NW25, yes probably. Uh, can this be built up beyond that? Genuinely don't know, but I know they do have a deeper one which I think was, was it the red apple they had? I'm not sure, I'll have to have a look and if I can find a picture I'll stick it up. But they did have a deeper blush. Um, but this I think would be fine for up to sort of medium, light medium skin tones. I have the Bender I love the fact they've actually got three different shades of yellow or gold in this. And that all three shades are accessible. With this mini fan brush, I could just pick up the outside colour if I wanted it. Um, likewise, if I had used my um, Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro highlighter brush, this would have been compact enough to get into the sides. I don't think my Zoeva. Um, 105 Lux highlight, yeah, 105 Lux highlighting brush. I think this would have been a bit too big to get into the sides, but if you were swirling them all together, it would be absolutely fine. Um, the palest shade would work for me as a highlighter because it's fine as a brow highlight. The deepest shade on me gives me a really, really nice inner eye highlight but would work therefore on my 4F family that are more blessed with the melanin than I am. Um, and likewise the colour around the edge, slightly too dark for me. If you're wondering my MAC shade, I am NW13, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the second lightest shade in MAC, so uh, uncooked chicken uh, probably would be the closest. Uh, simile for my my skin. Um, so the the the, the, out, the, 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 the it's hot. The outside shade and the leaves are too dark for me to use as a highlighter, unless I then put a lighter highlighter over the top or blend it. But that does mean it will work on my melanin blessed girls and boys who follow me here. So, there we go. I think that just about sums up my feelings. I need to go and get myself a drink because mine is empty and clearly my brain is starting to boil because I'm babbling like a lunatic. Some sort of say, how do we tell the difference? But, you know, I'm not one of those people. 
If you're new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome, I hope my babbling has not put you off and that you would like to uh, turn the subscribe button from red to grey and ring my bell, ring my bell, turning notifications on and choosing all notifications. Now, if you are one of my long-term babies who have already rung my bell and chosen all notifications, even if I am still in your news feed, please double check that your subscribe button is still grey and please double check that your notifications are still set to all notifications because some notifications means no notifications and I am still being told by people on a weekly basis that they are being unsubscribed from me, that their notification bell is being unrung um, some of them I'm still appearing in their news feeds, they hadn't realised until I said this and they checked and went Oh yeah, you're right, my, my subscribe button's gone red again, what on earth? Um, others thought I just hadn't uploaded for a while because of pain levels. So, it's highly frustrating as opposed to Haile Selassie, who was an athlete. Oh yeah, I'm definitely getting too hot and need to go and have a cool drink. But yeah, please double check um, that everything is still as it should be in your subscription world. And now, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.